we're gonna switch to English because we have Carl Bauer, a uh, friend and colleague. Uh, he's a um, um, senior uh, editor for Insights at Kelly Blue Book, but also he's uh, in the panel for the Car and Truck of the Year, North American Car and Truck of the Year Award, uh, which announced the list of candidates uh, this week, right? Carl, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, Javier. Yeah, the list just came out. And uh, any surprises? Uh, anything that, uh, that uh, caught your attention? I see a lot of Chevrolets, uh, uh, like four uh, Mercedes Benz, and a bunch of to if that's in the car uh, list, and then like a bunch of Toyotas in the in the pickup in the truck list. Yeah, and if you take Chevrolet and combine it with uh, GMC and Buick, there's a lot of General Motors because they've had a lot of pot product coming out in the last uh, 12 months. So that that corporations really doing a lot to introduce new models and try to you know capture market share yeah and not to compare to other awards but there's been really really good re uh, reviews uh, for example about the Impala uh, about the new CTS uh, and so I mean the CTS is not really out yet but uh, a lot of good things I've been talking about the Cadillac CDS and other cars from uh, from uh, Chevrolet um, which one uh, I mean it's, it's I guess it's hard to, to go for early favorites but uh, I've already in, 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 in early candidates to win this thing, but a uh, very interesting list. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, on one hand, we tend to uh, award more uh, mainstream cars, so something like a Chevrolet Corvette you'd think would have a tough time, but at the same time, it's all new and it's getting really good reviews. It looks like a really fabulous vehicle, so who knows? Um, you know, then you've got things like the uh, all those Mercedes, the Mazda 6, the Mazda 3, you know, which are really great m mainstream cars, the two Mazdas are. Um, you know, Jaguar F-Type, another kind of niche car, but just getting rave reviews in a beautiful vehicle. And so and then on the truck side, same thing, you know, you've got things like the RAV4 or, uh, you know, maybe the Sorento or certainly the uh, the Jeep Cherokee that would have a shot at it as being mainstream vehicles. Um, but then you have like the X5, which is an important vehicle for BMW that's all new and it, and it looks really good. Um, Subaru Forester. There's actually a lot more mainstream trucks than there are cars. Yeah, but uh, also, this year, so also the Land Rover, Range Rover, Sport. Uh, that we talked about uh, the top 10 list for uh, luxury SUVs uh, a few weeks ago with you. And that's another car that has gotten like a very, very good reviews all over the world. Exactly. See, that one's like the Corvette for the truck side, meaning it's not really yeah. a mainstream vehicle, but it's so fabulous that uh, it's going to be a tough list. Uh, it almost always is every year, but this this year, I mean, all these cars especially, there's just a lot of mainstream cars that deserve to be seriously considered. Yeah, uh, and the car uh, side again, uh, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, uh, which I drove uh, a few weeks ago in Toronto, it's just amazing car. I mean, like that, the amount of technology in that car is just incredible. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but again, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not a mainstream car, but I, the, the, it's really the best car in the world. I, I mean, they they call it, I and mean, they have something to say about that. I think. Yeah, well, and then they've got like the CA, which is this new mainstream Mercedes. You know, it's a yeah. Mercedes badge, but it's really the pricing and the and the price structure. They're meant to really let a whole lot of people buy Mercedes that maybe couldn't afford them, uh, not you know before. So now yeah. you're gonna have this mainstream kind of Mercedes, which would be a good candidate too. Yeah, which gonna start under thirty thousand. One thing we have about one minute, Carl. I'm sorry, but uh, one thing that caught my attention: no hybrids, but a few electrics. Uh, a new trend, huh? Yeah, the electrics, we just seem to see them everywhere. You know, they're just coming on strong, Fit and uh, Spark and 500, uh, 500E. I mean, these are all new electrics that have just come out, and the pricing's gotten more competitive, so they're actually realistic for people to buy, uh, especially the lease rates. So, yeah, electrics really coming on strong. Excellent. So where can people find more about the North American Car and Truck of the Year Award? Uh their web page, right? You know, there's a there's a website dedicated to it, you know, nactoy.com, and if you do any kind of search for N-A-C-T-O-Y, uh, it'll come up pretty quickly, or if you go to the, if you go to the website, it'll have the full list, and then you'll get to see it get paired down to the shorter list of 12 vehicles, and then down to the winner. Won the winner in the Auto Show in Detroit next uh, January. Thank you very much for your time, Carl. As always, uh, very good information, and nice talking to you again. Great talking to you, Javier. Take care. Thank you. Ahí está la lista de auto y camioneta del año para el 2014. Hay 29 autos, 18 camionetas ligeras entre los candidatos de la lista larga. Ahora la lista se empieza la votación de los 50 jueces. Se reduce después a 50, a 5, después a 3 y el ganador absoluto se anuncia en el Auto Show de Detroit en enero próximo. 
y para allá vamos a ir y en el próximo segmento vamos a hablar de uno de los candidatos el uh, Infinity Q50 2014 que fuimos a probar esta semana a Boston así que no se vayan que cuando regresemos hablaremos del Infinity Q50 2014 aquí en Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network